Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. We're studying the portion of Shoftim from the book Selections from Lekutei Sihot, the first talk of Shoftim. A little bit of an introduction. Mm -hmm. And in addition, mm -hmm. I will share with you the, some of the questions and the answers in a summary just before we begin. So it, might, it will be easier to follow. In this week's Torah portion, uh, in the fifth Aliyah, in the fifth section, there is a discussion of a city of refuge. We, we in literal translation is a shelter city. What does that law entails? According to Jewish law, the way God shared with us in several places of the Torah, but in this week's Torah portion, there is some addition that's not mentioned before. If someone committed a crime of murder, they are going to be punished with a capital punishment, provided all the uh, requirements are met. There, there must be a warning. We have to make sure that he's in sound <clears throat> mind. We need to make sure he's aware of the the consequences. There are many, uh, many prerequisites, but there is a possibility for capital punishment that only apply in the case of intentional murder on purpose. However, or in, if, what happens if it was unintentional? Someone killed somebody unintentionally. For an example, he's using a, an ax in the forest. People are coming there to cut trees as the Torah uses this as, as an example. And while hitting the tree, the, tree, the ax had cut a chip and that chip flew into the nearby person who was a passerby or also a woodcutter and killed them. He had not hated that person before. He did not intend to kill the person, um, but the person has died directly as a result of his activity. Another example the Torah uses is someone climbing up the ladder and one of the rungs uh, broke and he slipped and fell down while someone down there was holding the ladder or standing under the ladder while he, when he fell on that person, he killed that person. Mm. By the way, it's only when climbing up, not climbing, not going down. Go, going down is not, is, does not qualify. In other words, the shelter, this is another caveat and I will not discuss it in details. The unintentional killing must be not in such a degree that it's almost beyond our control. In that case, it does not go to a shelter city. And it cannot be that it is pretty close to negligent. If the activity involved is close to being negligent for not being careful and safe, there is no shelter city. So for an example, a car accident, God forbid, someone ended up killing, assuming that they were not drunk or they were not texting, that would call for a shelter city, a city of refuge to save themselves. I will show in a moment for what's saving himself. What if the guy was texting and that's when he was involved in a car accident? Oh, he was intoxicated? In the city of refuge will not save that person. He does not go to a, sh a shelter city. Now, the reason they have to go to a city of refuge is because there is somebody called the blood redeemer mm -hmm. who is a close relative, mm -hmm. a son, a father, a brother, or a grandson, or a sister, have the right, the permission to avenge the blood of the deceased. So they can go after the people, the person who's responsible and kill the person and they don't have to give an account. They are not gonna be put to trial provided the person is not inside a city of refuge. As soon as the person enters a city of refuge, it is a protection it's not, it's called like uh, international territorial ter ter territory that no one is allowed to fire. You're not allowed to kill mm -hmm. a person, a person who chased the murderer or the killer and kills that person or harm the person will be put to trial. Therefore, the Torah makes it a very stern warning on the court and on the Jewish community to have enough city of cities of refuge and in addition, there should be signage and clear paths. It should not be going through unpaved roads or very obscure 
pathways so that no one should, while they are running to save their life, should not get lost while searching for their city. So there had to be big, big signs, city of refuge, shelter city, city of refuge this way, and the roads always have to be open, should not be blocked by overflow flow of by flooding, should not be blocked by debris. They had to have a very clear path where there is easy to get access to and the direction the instructions are together must be easy. This is the discussion of this week's Torah, except there is a caveat. But before I want to read it in the text very quick so that you have it and in a full understanding. This is um, outside of the Yes. Uh, well, that's that's what we're about to talk. Okay. When God, you got, I'm reading chapter 19, verse 1. That's the fifth Aliyah of today's Torah portion. When God, you God, cuts off the nations whose land God, you God, is given you, and you inherit them and settle in their cities and in their houses, you should separate three cities for yourself within your land, which God, you God, is giving you as a possession. So use an instruction for three cities inside the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. Prepare signs. Prepare signs to indicate for yourself the route to the, these cities and position the three cities so that they are equally spaced across the expanse of the land, which God you God is giving you as an inheritance. They will be available for every accidental murder to flee there. So here is another prerequisite. There are three cities within the Jewish land within the holy land and those three cities must be spaced out equally like a triangular so that the distance from one city to the other is equal in case someone needs to run away it shouldn't be too hard for them to catch to get to that city these are the terms upon which the murderer may flee there in order to live whoever gives a fatal blow to his fatal unintentionally Provided he did not hate him yesterday or the day before, or if a man goes with his fellow into the forest to chop wood and his hand swings with, an, with the axe to cut down the tree and the iron flies off the handle and it happens to hit his fellow and he dies, he should flee to one of these cities in order to live. So the prerequisite is he does not hate him the day or the two days earlier. In other words, there was no intention ever to try and hurt that person. I instruct you to signpost these cities clearly and place them at equal distance in case an avenger of the blood pursues the killer while his heart is hot and he manages to catch up with him because of the long road and he strikes him to death for being that the murderer had not hated the victim yesterday or the day before he did not deserve to be punished with death therefore i am commanding you saying you should separate the three cities for yourself in other words it's so important that the road and the signage be posted very clear and always clear of debris or any 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 obstruction. things, any obstruction, because the avenger may his heart is still hard. We will study that in details. His heart is still hard, and he's pursuing to avenge the killing of his fellow relative. And because the man was very, very got lost in the road or did not know where to go, his blood is going to be shed, and it's not right because he should be able to make it to the shelter city and be protected. So far, so good. So how many cities do we have in the Holy Land? Three. In addition to that, to those three, Moshe put in, and we studied a few, few portions before, before, another three cities in Gilad, outside of Israel, uh, where the two and a half tribes inherited. Remember, Yosef, half of Yosef, Reuben, and Gad lived outside, across the east uh, bank of the of the Jordan River and over there Moshe assigned three cities aside those three so how many refuge city of refuge do we have in total six I want to add one more caveat every Levi city 
this Levites received cities from the tribes because they do not inherit in the land. Each tribe had to give them, I believe, there were a total of 48, 42 cities. Those 42 cities are also cities of refuge, uh, uh, for a uh, 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 shelter city. And the, the difference between them and the three and the three that Moshe designated are those six cities and a, a, a killer can live free of rent. In addition, he, when the person dies, he's buried them. The Levi cities, you can be saved, but you have to pay rent because the Levites received it as a gift. Mm -hmm. And if someone dies, he had to go back to be buried in his family's graveside. Is that clear so far? Here is the <clears throat> new revelation for this week's Torah portion discussion. When God, you God, will expand your border as he swore to your forefather, now God will expand beyond seven nations as he promised Abraham. And he gives you the entire land which he told your forefathers he would give as a result of your safeguarding and observing all these commandments, which I am commanding you today to, to love God, your God, and to walk in his ways for all times. In other words, before God talk about entering the Holy Land, conquering the land, how many in the Holy Land of seven nations? Three cities. Mm -hmm. Another three cities Moshe designated outside of Israel in Gilad because there were too many murderers there. Now God says, if you observe God's commandments and you love God and obey all his commandments, then he will re re reward you with an, the complete gift that he gave to Abraham, to our forefathers. That God said, you should add for yourself three more cities in addition to these three so that innocent blood will not be shed within the land of your God, which God your God is giving you for an inheritance, and you will be responsible for his blood. God says, add three more. You know what, what are we talking about? If you read about the gift that God is offering Abraham, he does not offer him the seven nations land. He offers him the ten nations land. In addition to the seven, there are three other nations across the Jordan called Kini, Kniziv, and Kadmoni. They are where Ammon and Moab uh, in the biblical time. In other words, across the Jordan, not part of the Holy Land. It's not part of the Holy Land, except when Mashiach will come. When we are perfect in our service of God and we love God, that's in the text, you take and designate three more cities and the God gives you the reason. In other words, it doesn't tell you to add three more so that no blood will be shed due to the fact that the avenger's blood is hot and he wants to take revenge and avenge the spilling of the blood of his relative. So therefore, you have to make clear signage. You have to separate those three and space them out equally so that everywhere you find a person finds himself, there is the easiest access it didn't take too long for him to reach a uh, shelter city. Are we clear? This is the topic of our discussion today. Uh, uh, Harry, did I help you with your question? <laughs> no. They are Gilad, they are on top, and Kinikniz and Carbonia is on the right. No, they are not. In other, by the way, what I tell you is Russian. Rashi says the land of Kinnik, and Kanmoni, it's based on the Talmud. Because God says you will serve God and obey all his commands to love God and all his commandments. You saw that, right? The Gemara says, when will that happen? It never happened before. It must be at the time of Mashiach. So when Mashiach will come, if you read about the, the promise for, the, for, for Abraham of the land, it says Kinnik, Nizi, and Kadmoni. Those three nations are mentioned by name. And they are not part of the seven nation because God actually gave the Abraham a promise of how many? Then the first seven is when you return back from Egypt, conquer them miraculously. Then there are two and a half tribes who refuse to go in the Holy Land. So there is another uh, area that he gave them called Gilad. But a God in here, this week's Torah portion is very spe specifically mentioned clearly that if you serve God and obey him completely, he will gift you with another three country, another three nations. 
and there Kinnik Nisim can read that he swore to you forefathers. It never happened before. God promised that it must be happening. By the way, this is one of the proof as the Rebbe will make out that, that, that there is Mashi coming of Mashiach. Because otherwise you cannot explain when will that happen. And God is promising as he swore to your father. In other words, there is no other way to explain the promise of the three extra nations other than the coming of Mashiach when we serve God and obey God and love God. And then we get back the three. And then God tells us in this week's portion something new. Add three more shelter cities. Why? And that's very crucial. So that someone who end up killing somebody should not be killed by the avenger whose blood, heart is hot, still hot after the killing of his relative and trying to avenge back from the killer. And therefore the killer should not, blood should not be spilled for no reason. And that's a person of every, every city. Every, every city, city, of course. But here God makes it clear and we'll find out that it's very crucial. Just a minute. This is... We don't even start talking about the Rebbe's talk. I need you to have a very clear understanding. That's why I enjoy it, because I make I understand all the details about six cities versus and three more. And the Rebbe is asking a very obvious question. So we'll find out. But the Rebbe has many other questions. Yes. <laughs> Many times. That's part. That's part of the law. The only exception is that when he brought into court, in other in other words, when someone caused somebody else to die, God forbid, it should never uh, happen to anybody. First thing they do in biblical time, they would run into a city of refuge. The court will send them to bring him out to be judged because perhaps he did it on purpose. Yeah. Perhaps it was close to a honest beyond his control and then he is exempt even from going into the shelter city perhaps he was negligent and therefore the shelter city will not Absolutely. save him so he has to be brought to court when he's brought to court nobody can hurt him and then he has to take be taken back well in the shelter city so he shouldn't he should never leave that city then he can kill him, of course. That's the Torah. That's a text. It did it happen many times. Many, many times it happened. In fact, there are times that they would try to trick the person to come out. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's it's the, the, the rule is until the high priest dies. As soon as the high priest is dead, everybody who went to the shelter city they can go back home to their families. Mm -hmm. We are not discussing it. I don't know the reason. That's God, mm -hmm. God of God law. And the mother of the high priest would give gifts every Friday. She would give them, shower them with sunflower seeds and pistachios and goodies and say, bless my son, bless my son, because they would pray that he should die. Because if he dies, the, the, day, the day is over, the, the game is over, they can go back. So um, the, she would treat them. So they were treated very well. In fact, the Jewish law is that a rabbi, a teacher, that needs to go into a shelter city, they are, um, uh, they are um, exiling his yeshiva as well. Because mm -hmm. the students that connect to a teacher will not receive the learning, will not absorb the learning from another teacher in the same way. That's the way the human mind works. And therefore, if he has to go to a shelter city, the yeshiva has to move into a shelter city. The words are Talmid Shegala, Rav Shegala, a teacher that was exiled, Maglin, I'm sorry, it's the opposite. Talmid Shegala, Maglin Rabo I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to read it the other way because I know it so well because the Rebbe has talked about it so many times. If a student, an avid student, ended up running to the shelter city, his master, his teacher has to go there too because he will not gain learning from anybody else. Once they got used to that teacher and they connect to your teacher and they enjoy that teaching, they, 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 wouldn't, they wouldn't benefit from anybody else and therefore the teacher has to go too. There is, the Rebbe has so many talks about it. Why? Why do you punish the teacher because of the student and it's not for now. Yes, anybody? Uh, no. Yes, Dick. Uh, in the shelter city, 
many people are there because they're there, not because they're uh, being protected. So they can come and go as they please. Residents, Residents. of those cities, yes. And they supply, they are engineers and attorneys and, and plumbers, everything, yes. Yes, Roger. Um, from, um, well, Hashem promises to, to increase the, the land. Um, Not to increase the land, to give the other three nations that he has promised Abraham. Right. Now, with the, with the coming of Mishia, would, would the sanctuary city be necessary? But that's the question that we're going to have. You're right on target. Okay. So here is a summary of the Rebbe's talk. It's not the whole thing of the, what the Rebbe is speaking because we're going to skip a lot of, the, because it's some of it is pilpul and it's not appropriate for us. But the idea, the Rebbe is asking, I don't understand. God is talking about a time when, when we go and serve God with all our heart and obey his commandments. It's in the text. It's not addition. Yeah. How is it possible for somebody to end up Killing someone else. Accident. By accident, you may say. Well, but if you read in the book of Exodus in Mishpatim, the Torah tells us that any time you have such an event, when someone climbing the ladder and fall and kills somebody else, it's on purpose. It's in the text. To save time, I'm not going to read it to you, but take my word. The Torah tells us that there was someone who killed with full intention and he deserved to die. And there was somebody who killed unintentional and nobody discovered him. So what does God do? He brings the two people together and one who deserved to die is down, down uh, holding the ladder, right next to the ladder. One who deserved to go to exile is slamming the ladder and it was done in public. There are video cameras and he fell and killed them says the, the Torah that the one who deserved to die will end up dying. The one who deserved to go to a shelter city will end up going to a shelter city. In other words, there is no chance. By chance does not exist. If someone ended up in a shelter city, says the Rebbe is asking two questions. It means there is someone who died because he's guilty of a crime that he needs to be executed. But you're talking about somebody who serves God, a time where we serve God and love God with all the, the obey all his commandments. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, the person who end up killing, in other words, the Rebbe said it's a, it's a two question. The one who got killed, who studied in the Torah is because he's, 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 he deserved to die because he committed a mm -hmm. crime of uh, worthy of execution, but nobody saw it. The one who, key, who, who end up in a shelter city is because he killed before somebody unintentionally, therefore he has to. But, but you, you, at the time you obey God, and, as God, God is going to prevent us from committing such crimes, such, sh such events. Now the Rebbe is going on to, this is the main question. Now the Rebbe is asking other questions. The Rebbe says that why do you have to make three cities and divide them equally? and make signage and clear path so the blood of the killer should not be on the court's hand in case the avenger's heart is still hot and he is in hot pursuit after the killer. And therefore you have to make sure he can make it to the shelter city and protect himself. So the Rebbe, I don't understand. If someone got killed and this is a time where everybody behaves, then why do you have someone's heart is hot to avenge the killing of, of, of his relative? After all, it was the right thing. Otherwise, God would not allow for it to happen. How many times people fell off a ladder and the guy didn't die? If it happens, for a reason. So why is this that the, if the court cannot execute that person and the person it did it unintentionally because he does not know the, the man that he killed. Mm -hmm. He never met him or he does. He loves that person. Yet the Torah says, be very, very careful to have clear path and to make sure there is signage so, in, so that you are not allowing for the avenger whose blood is hard, whose heart is hard to pursue and mm -hmm. kill that person. So this is a different timing. You don't have revenge. You don't have hate. You don't have jealousy. You don't have, I'm going to do tit for tat. It doesn't work that. So why is this that the, in other words, if you want to, 
First, I don't understand why there is a shelter city. At that time, there will be no people get, get killed. Number two, if you do shelter city, why do you have to have the warning so clear, just like at the time of exile with the pathways and the division of the three city, cities equally distant so that the, the killer may escape the wrath of the avenger where because his his heart is hot, uh, th this this does not apply at the time. Sorry, what is the answer? So the Rebbe's answer is very deep, and it goes to a, 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 a the Rebbe. In other words, the Rebbe answers this. It's not just for this. It 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 addresses other topics that we are going to skip. But the Rebbe's answer is that the time of the coming of Mashiach, when God will gift us. Mm -hmm it will be accountable for people who end up killing during the time of exile and did not escape to a shelter city because there was no shelter city. In other words, today, unintentional killing, you don't have the, the law of avenging the killer. You don't have the law of, of the running into a city of refuge because majority of Jews live outside of Israel. It only apply at the time when there is a Beit HaMikdash, there is a holy temple. Majority of Jews live in a, in a holy land comes God and says, be aware that there will be a time when Mashiach will arrive. And Mashiach will arrive, we will serve God, we obey the, all the commandments, and then they will have to make up for what they miss, what, uh, what part people have missed, bringing sacrifices, and the Rabbi bring example, Rabbi Ishmael once had a debate about, are you allowed to read next to a candle on Shabbat? Rabbis said, you're not allowed to. Why? Because maybe the candle would be tilted or a little, uh, the flame would be too low and it's hard for you to read. So you would move the wick and cause the ignition of the flame to, to expand, to have more light. Rabbi Shmuel said, no, I, I remember at Shabbat when I read, I'm careful that I will not touch the candle. The Gemara says Rabbi Shmuel once followed this ruling, his own ruling, he read, and he ended up touching the wick to expand the flame. And after Shabbat, he wrote down on a note, when Mashiach will arrive and rebuild the temple, I'll bring chatat shlema, a sin offering, a very fat sin offering. In other words, I'm fully guilty of, of, of doing it because I said, despite the rabbis, that it's, it's not going to happen. And I'm testimony that it did happen. And therefore, I'm guilty of bringing a sin offering for unintentional behavior. Says Rabbi, what do you mean he wrote it on a note? For what reason? He could have said that. Says Rabbi, he wrote it on a note because he knew that if Mash when Mashiach will come, you'll have to bring a sin offering for that sin. Therefore, he wrote it down to make sure that it's it's on record. Mm -hmm. In other words, when Mashiach will arrive, we will be able to clean up our pa past. So for us today, Mashiach would be here, God willing. But for someone who's not alive, and he died 100 years ago or 500 years ago, I assume that they have some reasons to bring to atone, to clean up their soul. They will have the opportunity to do so when Mashiach will arrive and build a temple. <laughs> what happened to someone who committed an unintentional killing at that time? They will have to run into a city of refuge because they never fulfilled a mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they must go there says God, when God will give to you with the other three countries or the other three lands, put in three shelter cities equally divided. Now comes the second question, the real question. God says it has to be a clear path with signage so that the, the avenger, the family member of the one who got killed should not take Revenge should not kill the killer, right? Mm -hmm. You need to protect yourself from that guy because his heart is hot. As the Rebbe, if it is about something that happened 500 years ago or 50 years ago, what do you mean his heart is hot? It's already passed. Says the Rebbe, from here we learn that the Torah is teaching us the way the human nature is created. And therefore, we need to realize that that's the way Hashem created us. The fact that the, the avenger's heart is hot is not because he has negative feeling. It's not because he's looking to let go of his anger. It's not because he's in trauma and that's part of the therapy, killing the killer. 
It's because that's the way Hashem created the human for the safeguarding and protection of the universe. So you have one way you have to protect your life. Someone tried to kill you, you must protect yourself even at the cost of your life for that person. Then you have another way, the court. The court must come and set boundaries. And someone committed a crime, let's say a murder, they must execute a person. Why? God said so. So people should not try to act in that uh, uh, heinous way. There is another way of protecting the life, and that is if someone caused somebody else to die unintentional, God had instilled in the avenger, in the family member, a desire to avenge. It's not a negative, it's not something bad that we should eradicate. We shouldn't be proud and say, I, I, I don't have that feeling, I'm not that bad. It's not true. God created it, the human in that nature, so that we desire to avenge, because that's what God wanted. It's, it's in, in placed in the DNA on purpose. And the purpose is to be careful not to come to the point of killing someone unintentionally. Mm -hmm. To put ourselves into a fence of safety, you shouldn't get there. In other words, just like there are methods of protecting life, as I said, prote pro protecting my life. Another one is the court trying to protect the safety of the community. There is a third way of that called the avenger. If someone unintentionally kills somebody, the avenger's heart will get hot. Even if it's 500 years later, he will have the in his DNA the desire to avenge. And therefore, God says, do not put the blood of the killer on your hands by not posting clear signs or by making one city farther than usual so that on the road while he's fleeing to the shelter city, he's going to be caught by the avenger and get killed. Did I make myself clear? Mm -hmm. This is the top. Did you study it before, Ali? No? Okay. Yes. Which I think is ph phenomenal. So the Rebbe is sharing with us much, much more in that story because it comes to teach us that they have, first the avenger heart is hot, and it's mentioned in those three cities at the time when you serve God. In other words, it's not a negative. Killing someone is a protection. People are talking about, you know, killing the terrorist death sentence, etc. It's rubbish. It's bad. Because what we see here, God wants to make sure that life is the greatest gift and it's a reflection of God, and therefore you have to cherish it. And therefore, if someone ended up causing the, the, the end of life for somebody else unintentional, he could not be blamed for it. He has, there is an opportunity for the avenger, and God had instilled in the avenger the desire to avenge. Plain, plain, plain simple, not to bring back the person who died, to avenge. And the, this is not just the right thing, it was created by God. Why? It's a method to, so to say, cause people to think twice and be extra careful not to get to that point where in order for them to save their life, they have to stay away and run from the Avenger and they live in the shelter city for the rest of their life unless the high priest died. Yes, and, and oh, by the way, another point we learn about the coming of Moshiach, when Mashiach will arrive, as God promises it will happen, because he promised that land to Abraham, it's impossible that God's promise cannot be fulfilled. That is another proof the Rambam makes that Mashiach will come. And by the way, we didn't get into, the Rebbe says there are two periods of the coming of Mashiach. The first one, as Rambam calls, is natural nature of the universe, where there is, there is still jealousy and, and uh, animosity. The other period where everybody is perfect, that's when God will give us a three lens. Even then we'll have to atone. So when Mashiach comes, God will give us an opportunity to bring a sin offering for things that we did, for someone did a thousand years ago, and clean slate and retroactively remove all the stains, all the negativities, all the bad, because we are perfectly getting married to God and we are perfectly clean and more, most beautiful. Yes. And therefore, at that time, there will be no unintentional killing, but there will be the ability to fix what we did in the past. What? So this is why, if that's the case, why the shelter cities need to transition on? To go back for atoning for the past. That's the point. Yeah. Someone 500 years ago caused an unintentional killing. Yeah. He, never he never went to, so he comes back alive. At this point, if he does not, 
the avenger has the right to get rid of him. And the avenger is not committing a sin. And the avenger's heart is going to be hot. Because God created that nature in the human. That's the point of the Rebbe. Yeah, okay, so it's nothing to do with shoulder C. <laughs> but you see that God said, serve God with all your heart and obey his commands. Did you this is in the text? So, so this is a very known question about tzedakah. It says that there will be no poor. So the, what's the answer? The answer is just like the, how they did tzedakah in the desert. In the desert, when they lived 40 years, they had clothing, they had food, they had shelter, they have everything. How do you give tzedakah? And the answer was that the rich men, the rich people, knew the taste of very fancy food that the poor men never tasted. And they, in the manner, because you can taste anything. And they will tell the poor man, ask for caveat, <laughs> ask for Colby beef. And the poor man never heard of it, never knew. By listening, by 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 listening to the rich, the rich man would do tzedakah, do, do kindness with them by just simply telling them what flavor they should ask for in the manna. So when Mashiach will come, we will be able to do tzedakah by teaching Torah each other. Something I study, I can share with you. Sometimes, something you study, you can share with me. And that's the tzedakah. The same is for every other one of the commandments. It really makes sense. Every Jew got Egypt with 90 dozen worth of women. There will be a guy who can't do caviar or anything. All right. This is not the discussion of the thing, right? Um, I, I hope, uh, actually, I covered the entire things, and, and uh, I think that this, is, so I hope that you got the ideas of the Rebbe's talk. If you can read it inside, there will be some areas that are a little more uh, in detail. I want to read just the last, the last one, page 256, number eight. The cities of refuge have a spiritual parallel that makes them relevant even in the present age. In a spiritual sense, the term cities of refuge refers to the words of Torah. As our sages say, the words of Torah are a refuge. May it be God's will that through establishing these cities of refuge, that is, increasing our service of Torah study, we will merit that in the near future, Hashem, your Lord, will expand your boundaries in a simple and literal sense. This is particularly relevant in the present time. This, the month of Elul, which is given to the Jewish people as a refuge. The, in other words, Torah is a city of refuge. You go inside the Torah, it saves you from the evil desire that try to kill you. The month of Elul, the last month of the, is also a city of refuge where God is around us and protecting us. Indeed, its very name, Elul, serves as an acronym for the phrase, Inal Le'adobe Samti Lecha, he committed the act of, because of an act of God, I will set aside for you, alluding to God's kindness in setting aside a time, a month of Elul, for anyone who's seen throughout the year to turn to God in Teshuvah with the knowledge that his Teshuvah will be accepted. The word Elul has many acronyms. One of them is from the Torah portion of this week. Ina le'yado v'samti lecha makom asher yanus shama. Ina le'yado v'samti lecha is Aleph Lamed Vav Lamed, each word begins with corresponding letters, because God tells us that the Mount of Elul is a city of refuge. If you committed a crime during the year, you can run into that city of refuge, which is the Mount of Elul, and reconnect with God, and you will read of the uh, negative behavior. When God expands, and that will cause, our behavior will cause for God to expand. When God expands your boundaries, you shall add three more cities, that is, three additional cities of refuge. Similarly, at that time, there will be an increase in the spiritual counterpart of the cities of refuge, an increase in Torah, the revelation of the Mashiach, of the, uh, by Mashiach, of the inner motivating principles of the Torah in the ultimate future, May this happen spiritually nowadays. Says the Rebbe, just like at the coming of Moshiach, God says, expand the city of refuge, mm -hmm. right? You add three more. So is with regards to Torah. When Moshiach will come, it says, Torah Hadasha Meititetze. Moshiach will reveal one part of the Torah that no one ever touched. 
No, mm -hmm. no one tapped into it. And that teaching of Torah, we just studied the Torah is a city of refuge, spiritually a city of refuge. What happens when Sheol come? God will expand more cities of refuge. We'll add more Torah so we can deepen our mind into the study of Torah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.